Welcome back into One Soccer. Today, Andy and Ollie still with you. Very pleased to be joined now by Valor FC head coach Rob Gale, who's also a former Canadian youth national team head coach. So you know, Rob, we're going to pick your brain just a little bit when it comes to this current Canadian squad vying to make the Tokyo Olympics. But let's begin with Canadian Premier League talk. Uh, busy offseason, obviously Valor re-signing players, seeing some players go. What would you say to the fan base that you guys have done during this offseason that they should get excited about? Um, I think for us, it was a case of retain a lot of the, the core pieces from last year that we were excited about and add quality and depth. Uh, and I think we've just about done that in every position. We, we got about two or three still to announce, but um, we feel pretty good. And obviously we needed to in, increase our output at the top end of the field. And we think by adding, you know, proven quality, Kevin Allerman, uh, Yaru Deloa, who's an exciting young Canadian prospect that no one will have seen yet from Sporting Cristal, uh, Ronnie Mazza from Venezuela. We feel like we're adding some uh, some quality at the top end to match uh, the core foundation we had at the other end. So, Rob, uh, a couple of weeks ago on this show, we were, me and Gareth were asked to pick who we thought could be a, a breakout player in the CPL. Uh, in 2021, and Gareth, I think, went with Vashon Neuville. I chose Austin Ricci. Gareth wasn't so sure on the pick, but I, I liked a lot of what I saw from, from Ricci <laughs> at the Island Games. Uh, how confident are you that he's going to prove me right and my reputation is going to be okay here? I'm very confident in you over Gareth every time, Oliver, let me tell you. <laughs> that's, just con that's just confirmed it. But uh, no, I think you're right. Uh, you look at his expected goals, his touches in the area, all of the modern metrics. Um, he was right there and he got in great positions and that's what you always want for a, a striker, right, is to get in and around those opportunities. And I know seeing him in a daily environment that he's got the ability to finish them. So I think we, we saw more of him and, and what I love about him, he doesn't give defenders rest. He's a big, strong boy. You saw him when he caught the uh, Ottawa player out the air, which you guys got one of the best memes of the season there, the dirty dancing uh, montage. Uh, yeah, he's got all the tools and we're excited to have a full season with Austin. And I think he feels settled. He, he knows he's got our confidence and uh, he's got good players around him to push him and continue to provide those opportunities for him. Mm -hmm. Rob, you provide us with a lot of good memes. We're going to get into some of that a little later as well. But uh, let's go to the other side of the pitch, because I know last week you did sign goalkeeper Matt Silva. Are you still looking for a number one? What are maybe some of the other moves you're, you're paying attention to right now before the season starts? Yeah, without tipping uh, our hand too much, uh, we've got irons in the fire in uh, right the way up the spine. And you want competition for places. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, a... a, a slightly reduced uh, season in terms of time frame no matter what happens going forward so you need strength and you need depth and you need competition for places so we're certainly looking uh, i think matt is very capable having had him in last year obviously a unique uh, situation backing up james and and the agreement we had uh, with mr pantemis but um Matt's more than capable of being a number one in this league. He's got experience from Sweden. He started out as York's number one goalie before being injured in the inaugural season. And uh, we're confident with him and we'll also be looking to make sure he's, he's earning that spot as well. Rob, looking at this Olympic qualifying tournament that's, that's going on right now, um, obviously you've got a ton of experience at the youth level with, with the national program. You've seen a lot of the, the senior guys on, the, on the, the first team now come through the ranks. What, what do you make of kind of the, the player pathway as it is right now in Canada and, and what maybe changes have you seen since you were in that job uh, compared to now? Uh, the number of players in professional environments, the big one, right? And that's what we know Canadian Premier League is for. I think there's more opportunities uh, in the USL championships, more Canadian players uh, at the top level of the game, as we know, uh, and also at the levels in between and in MLS. And I think that's that's the biggest thing. We used to have, you know, players drop out or, or not be um, available for club reasons. And you'd be looking at Sands Club. You know, that was our number one provider of players. Right. And um, that, that's not good enough, right? And we knew that and we were always up against it. And now you see the beauty of the CPL when, you know, the Toronto FC players unfortunately weren't available. That opens up opportunities for 
Farsi and Absi and, and, and David Norman Jr. So I think that that's the biggest difference that I see is there's more depth, more players in better environments. Um, and, and that can only aid the coach because people will criticize players. Oh, you only used to look at uh, MLS environments, right? Or MLS academies. Well, to be fair, your training environment is everything. Right. Uh, and Mauro can't select players that haven't played in seven months and haven't been training and, and, and competing. You know, it, it's very, very tough like that. So I think you have to take that into consideration as the head coach who's in the, the best form, uh, the peak physical conditions. And that's the only way you've got opportunities. You see how difficult it is in CONCACAF um, with the opposition and also the conditions, the heat, the humidity, the, the, the field sometimes, obviously not in Mexico, but all of that weighs on your mind when you're selecting talent. Well, the CPL already showing its importance, as you mentioned. A lot of the players getting called up. David Norman Jr. actually getting into a game. So definitely uh, that's valuable. And the depth, right, between Olympic qualifiers, World Cup qualifers, Gold Cup is coming on up. Would you say the, the pool, because of that, is deeper for Canada? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, one of the things that's exciting, right, is... If you if we were going to an Olympics, you could select Jonathan David, Liam Miller, Alfonso Davies, uh, pick the bones out of that for a front three if anybody wants to uh, to go with us, right? And and that's what you need. But the beauty of that is also it gives options at the first team level. Uh, the connection points between Mauro and and John are obviously key. People like Frank Stirring. Um, others that you know could go between age groups i think that's vitally important because you'll have times that a certain team will need to take precedence in the calendar or for availability purposes you know what dates fifa recognize uh often uh aid selection going back to your time with the the youth program uh, Rob, obviously, as I mentioned, you've seen a lot of the top talent that we, we watch with the national team today, Alfonso Davies and that, that famous win over England in, in 2016, for example. Um, but I'm curious, is, is there any one player um, that you coached in at the youth levels that you thought would maybe make it to the top and, and hasn't done so? Oh, don't like to single players out, mate, <laughs> for, for not fulfilling potential. I prefer no, to no. think that they, that they still might... Um, you know, there's talent everywhere. And uh, I think it was Sean Fleming who used to say, uh, every child is gifted. They just open their gifts at different times. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to look at it. No pathway or journey to football is, is, is a better description than a pathway because it's not linear. Um, and sometimes, you know, it, it's getting in the right environment at the right time. You could take two players like a Jordan Hamilton who was on the scene a little bit earlier in and around the Toronto first team environment um, and has sort of stagnated a little bit. And then Kyle Lahren, who went the college route, got into MLS and has just soared ever since. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult to predict if there was a, a good way of doing it, then uh, we'd all be earning a lot more money than we are. Um, uh, but Mystic Meg is on my staff for this season as we continue to unearth talent. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so speaking a little bit of unpredictability, we didn't think we would open up our social media one day and see this precious, <laughs> precious video, Rob. I mean, I see don't you know. Is I'll this. Raise you. Yeah. Let's just take a look at that. Okay, so this is cold. Um, I know what the weather is like in Manitoba. You were, you were nice enough to take the shoes off before jumping on in. <laughs> Why were you brave enough to do this? And is this something. Is this something you regret at all, or are you still standing by this? Um, I'm not sure what's whiter, me or the snow in that picture, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> look at that, the, the backstroke. I've got to say, look, uh, you can't challenge us to a winter competition. Pa's out there with a few flakes of snow in Victoria, thinking he was tough going out in the garden. It barely tickled his toes, so... I had to jump in the above ground pool in the backyard and I didn't realize I should have waited for a nice soft powder or some new snow. Yeah. It scraped up my body. I was absolutely in bits for about two days after complete rash burn, snow burn disaster. But uh, hey, I am nothing if uh, not good for a little entertainment. Wait, where's happened. Jimmy and Tommy is what I want to know. Bobby, maybe? Oh, mm -hmm. dearie me. Tommy's never going to get those locks wet, is he? Let's be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is so true. That backstroke, that, uh, that's Olympic quality right there. Uh, Rob, we really appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, we continue to keep our eye on, you know, all CPL teams hitting the training ground soon. And, of course, an announcement on official date. So until then, we wish you all the best. Thanks, guys. Pleasure Thanks, to see Rob. you.